Halo Infinite has been out for a few months already, but ever since launch, I've had trouble settling in. I do not like how Halo Infinite handles its core controls as well as I liked in Legacy Halo, including games made by 343. Least of all is how Halo handles aiming on both mouse and keyboard versus controller. I actually think both input methods handle worse compared to the MCC, and I have evidence I'd like to present to the Halo community. I've done the deep dive, and I think I've discovered what will warrant concern of the entire Halo community regardless of preferred input method. The issue of different input methods and how they ought to be handled has never really cooled down since Halo released on PC. I'd like to break the ice and present everyone with some data and arguments that could hopefully enlighten players on both sides. Hopefully you'll see that Halo Infinite changes the aiming formula in ways that leave neither side satisfied. I'll be honest with my partisanship, I don't like these new changes and want you to see things as I do. Let's begin with how Legacy Halo has traditionally done aim assist. Actually, 20 years ago, Combat Evolved represented something of a revolution in aim assist that allowed the first person shooter genre to feature prominently on console for the first time. Halo has handled aim assist the same way in each game since, with few minor changes to things like joystick acceleration curve, dead zones, max thresholds, and so on. I'll explain how aim assist used to work with simple terms, which is actually the beauty behind it. Aim assist is simple and intuitive. It doesn't require a complex understanding of video game development. It consists of two components, nothing more. The first is what I call reticle friction. You may know this as reticle magnetism, but I prefer the term friction because it's improper to call it magnetism. Magnets attract toward one another, whereas the reticle in Halo merely slows when it nears an enemy more akin to how friction slows moving objects. There is no pull on your reticle whatsoever. It's important to note that in every Halo game before Infinite, this friction area actually extends significantly beyond your target's actual body. This will be important later. Once reticle friction kicks in, your sensitivity slows to about 30 or 50% while your reticle is within these set boundaries. This basically replicates the advantages that a mouse has, as PC players are more easily able to slow their aim manually near targets. The game is basically doing the same for controller players, giving them this advantage too. The second component to Legacy Halo Aim Assist is bullet magnetism. In this case, it is fair to use the term magnetism because the bullets are literally curving towards the target. There is an attraction between the player's shots and the target. This is the most complex part of Aim Assist and does more than just make the game easier. It's also about consistency. Bullet magnetism actually lends a massive buff to hipfire accuracy because it grants forgiveness to your aim over longer distances. Remember the Halo 3 battle rifle. The thing has a massive reticle, and the bullets can theoretically go almost anywhere in this space. However, if you place your reticle over a grunt's upper body and fire, you will still likely score a headshot because the bullets curve more strongly toward the head despite a grunt's whole upper body and maybe even some empty space occupy the reticle. This is why reticles are so big traditionally. These two components work together to turn Halo's play spaces into a sort of canvas. You're free to look and aim wherever, but once your reticle simply nears an entity that the game identifies as a target, you are granted reticle friction. This is effectively a lock-on mechanic that turns each enemy into its own canvas. Once locked on, you are more easily able to target an enemy's weak points. Once the game's pseudo lock-on system engages, bullet magnetism steps in to grant a close enough factor to all your shots. It's important to note that reticle magnetism is actually strongest toward the head. This is akin to depressing the area around a golf hole so that the ball naturally rolls in if the golfer lands close enough. This is how aim assist used to work in Halo. The beauty of it? The game doesn't move anything for you. The player is in the driver's seat at all times. All of the aim assist in Halo relies on direct inputs from the player. The game does not extend itself beyond the player to help them land shots. You still have to do all of the work. Once we move on to Halo Infinite, almost everything changes. Firstly, the reticle friction area is reduced so that it doesn't extend to past the target's physical body. Reticle friction is arguably the one thing that makes controllers viable for FPS games on console, and Infinite doesn't give it to you until after you've lined up the shot. Reticle friction is important because it helps controller players acquire and track their targets, and this game doesn't give it to you until you are already on target, so what's the point of it? 
because of this massive nerf to reticle friction, the game doesn't help you land your shots so much as it prevents you from missing them. To compensate for this nerf, and it is a nerf, the game introduces actual reticle magnetism. In this case, it is fair to call it reticle magnetism because the game does pull on your reticle. Scratch that, the game straight up aims for you. Time to explain how aim by, I mean, reticle magnetism works in Halo Infinite. It's actually kind of complicated. It's actually the most complex system I've ever seen in a shooter, and it's kind of like a whole built-in targeting system, a piece of dedicated software within the game. When in neutral mode, the game will perform as normal, albeit with the nerfed reticle friction as mentioned earlier. However, once the game detects that you are trying to target a moving enemy, the game straight up starts auto-tracking your target, but only if the game detects right stick movement. If you are off the right stick, enemies pass through your reticle without affecting it in any way. So yeah, the game kind of aims for you. I do not know by what parameters the game moves between neutral mode and targeted mode, but there seems to be an arbitrary and inconsistent delay. It's not reliable, hard to predict, and makes strafing almost pointless because aim assist is literally tracking you with robot-like precision. Now, my previous attitude about Halo's built-in aimbot actually kind of betrays my true feelings on the matter. Despite Infinite's aggressive tracking, I actually find the legacy controls more lucrative. I said the game aims for you, that's not so much an accurate statement as the game aims instead of you. Yes, Halo Infinite gives controller players a lot of help, but it's not good help. Remember the original beauty of Legacy Aim Assist? The player still had to do all the work. Halo Infinite's reticle magnetism, or aimbot, is really strong, but it works unpredictably, and the only way to somewhat master it is to get used to it. Whereas Legacy Halo had players doing all the work, Infinite just straight up pulls your reticle around like 343 has a second controller connected to your system, you are constantly trying to coordinate your thumbstick with the aim assist as it inputs alongside you and 343's trolling inputs can never be fully anticipated with complete precision. Reticle magnetism in Halo Infinite is really bad and causes you to miss shots. I actually think the only reason it's been included is to allow players to cope with Halo Infinite's broken movement. Yes, basic movement in Halo Infinite is radically changed from legacy games, and makes mouse and keyboard almost unplayable. Actually, my next planned video is about movement and how it's been altered in over prior games. So if I've piqued your interest, get subscribed. The third and final component to Halo Infinite's aim assist is bullet magnetism, but it's a far cry from what it was in legacy games. This is the only form of aim assist that mouse and keyboard also gets. Infinite's bullet magnetism has been toned down severely compared to legacy games but also changed fundamentally in some ways. While many players welcome these seemingly more competitive and less forgiving settings, I have to say 343 has overdone it. Bullet magnetism is so weak and infinite that for a while I thought there was none. Can you blame me? I had to go test it in the firing range just to see it in action and even then there's hardly any reason to it. Shots seemingly on target will hit or miss because bullet magnetism is too weak to be consistent. It seems like the attraction is stronger to the right side than it is on the left of enemies. It makes all enemies feel smaller and like they're farther away than they should be. Remember earlier how I mentioned the Halo 3 battle rifle is oversized reticle? All the reticles in this game are so much smaller than in legacy games because the game is trying to telegraph the lesson forgiveness but all this does is make certain weapons less viable. Ever wonder why the stalker rifle just can't secure kills efficiently despite having great stats on paper? Or why the commando was trash? How many times per match do you have your reticle directly over the dome of an enemy only to need 3 or 4 extra shots to finally secure the kill? Reticle size and bullet magnetism are linked as the game uses the reticle to telegraph where the shots will go. There is a reason previous games had such big reticles. Just put the thing over the enemy and you'll hit. And the reticle is purposefully big so that this is more easily accomplished. Halo Infinite punishes you for shots that would land in every other Halo game. Without this new reticle magnetism, compensating for the less in bullet magnetism, Halo Infinite would be the most demanding Halo game ever, which is funny because the fundamental controls do not lend themselves well to precision aiming in Infinite. Instead of creating the same settings that everyone must learn, acceleration curves and other joystick settings, 
343 gives you most of the settings almost as if they're skirting responsibility. Halo Infinite's controller settings can't be bad. You set them yourself. All the settings are in your hands. Almost like 343 won't up to the mechanics that they designed. Legacy Halo games made very few design changes to the controls over the years. What did change, though, were some minor settings. You're probably familiar with these. Stick dead zone, max input threshold, acceleration curve, and so on. This is the most customizable game to date. Most of these settings are usually withheld by the developer, but the most important one is left out. In the settings menu, their instructions repeatedly make reference to the curve, which is a measure of how reticle accelerates as you move the stick. We're told that changing these settings will affect the curve, but we're not given visual representation of how. Not only that, but we're not given the option to change the curve, which is a tragedy because the curve in Halo Infinite sucks. It suffers for the same reasons it did in Halo 5. All right, so let me pull up my camera and show you the issue with the way 343 did look acceleration. It's completely annoying. So here's my controller. I'm going to slowly turn to the left. I'm going to hit a point where suddenly my aim goes from pretty slow to flying. It just speeds up. It's not gradual. It just sort of happens out of nowhere. There it is. It's right there. You can see the two different sensitivities. Let me look down so you can really get a better idea. That's really annoying. It's at about 80%. Awful. Absolutely awful. It's very hard to get adjusted to this. I hate this game's curves so much that I use the Xbox Elite controller's ability to modify sensitivity curves to try and get this game controlling like Reach, but it's not fully possible. Halo Infinite tries to push itself as the most precise and competitive game yet, but it fails to control like it. 343, if you don't want to set a good curve that everyone has to learn, at least give us all of the controller options so I can try to get this game controlling like Halo Reacher 3. Right now, more than half of the community can't figure out what settings to use. Now that we've covered controller, let's talk about how mouse and keyboard perform. They don't. On paper, mouse and keyboard handle as much like it does on MCC, except looking around feels terrible. Aiming does not feel as good as it does on this new Slipspace engine as it did on the Blam engine. You still get bullet magnetism, but reticle friction is rightly disabled. Except in Halo Infinite, the third wheel of reticle magnetism, or aimbot, is something controllers have to insulate themselves from Halo Infinite's broken movement. With a mouse and keyboard, it's impossible to be competitive outside of Tactical Slayer. I'll divulge my bias here. I prefer a mouse and a keyboard to play games. I'm a PC player. But I've spent most of my life using a controller, and I've totally made the switch back for Infinite, and I'm not going back unless something changes. If you play this game with a mouse, you're playing it wrong. PC players, trust me, if you have a controller lying around, hook it up and you'll be amazed how quickly you get frequent perfects on every weapon in this game except snipers. Being a PC player in this game is a constant sob story of struggling to keep your reticle on target, believing that your aim will be good enough for the four shot, only realizing that six bursts is still not enough to kill your opponent. You should also note that all the issues that stem from a smaller reticle with less forgiving bullet magnetism still apply when using a mouse and keyboard. While using a mouse, Infinite's basic movement is your greatest adversary. It's like every enemy is slathered in oil and your reticle just slips off whenever you line up a shot. Infinite's movement is so problematic that it's going to be the topic of my next video. Suffice to say, movement in Legacy games had whole systems of physics applied to them, while Infinite has none. While Halo Infinite does support mouse and keyboard even on console, it's certainly not viable, which makes this Razor collaboration kind of insulting. I feel bad for anyone who bought these hoping to get serious on Halo on PC. Actually, before now, I didn't understand why the whole aim assist on controller against mouse and keyboard debate was even a thing. MCC handles things well, and the inputs actually feel pretty equivalent. I even use a controller sometimes when I feel like relaxing. Traditional aim assist on legacy games is perfect and even a little poetic. 
Both MK and Controller get a base of bullet magnetism, the same degree, except Controller gets radical friction to do what Controllers can't do on their own. It's like they're perfectly complementary to the point that you don't even need separate playlists. Separate playlists won't actually solve anything, but they will defeat the purpose of cross-platform play. Both input methods would still be janky and inconsistent. All the factors listed earlier, especially movement, would still cause you to miss your shots unfairly. MK users would still be stranded with trash tier aim. I want to address all the people who think that aim assist in Legacy Halo is too strong, or that controller players have no skill because the game aims for them. In MCC, none of this is true. Remember the simple beauty of traditional aim assist? The player still has to do all of the work. Which component of aim assist would you nerf? The reticle friction, which is literally just the game trying to emulate for a controller, what a mouse can do inherently? Or the bullet magnetism, which KBM also gets? Halo has had aim assist on mouse for as long as it has been officially playable with one. This is sensible for a game like Halo. Games like Destiny 2 have even turned aim assist into a stat that makes guns unique from one another. Buffing and nerfing aim assist, or handling, is something that Bungie does regularly. I actually love how MCC handles already. I think aim assist is perfect in every game up to and maybe including 4 where bullet magnetism is a little bit stronger. As a player who prefers KBM, things feel reasonable. If I lose to a controller user, it's still because they had to outplay me. And when I target other players, I'm still confident in my ability to hit my target. In MCC, both input methods essentially have to obey the same rules. If I lose a gunfight, I can more reasonably accept that I missed my shots and genuinely got outplayed. I can accept responsibility for my failures because success is clear and attainable. If I miss or lose, it's because I as a player need to improve, regardless of which input method I chose that day. It feels like a skill issue rather than a mechanical one. In conclusion, I feel that 343 has tried to reinvent the wheel and anticipation for the first game officially made to support keyboard and mouse. In the end, both input methods have gotten the short end of the stick, unnecessarily. I really need to see Legacy Aim restored in order for Halo to make good on its 10 year promise because at present, things are just too untenable. Controllers are inconsistent and keyboard and mouse is just not viable. As of now, MCC is the definitive Halo experience and Halo Reach makes Halo Infinite feel like a Unity asset flip when compared mechanically. Usually. A good Halo player is able to finish a game with around 50% total accuracy. This is quite high when you consider that other games average is usually much lower. Of this 50%, nearly all missed shots are from automatic weapons, which have been traditionally underpowered. Once you pick up any of the series' main weapons, whether it be the battle rifle or the DMR, a solid player is expected to not miss at all. In Halo Infinite, it's clear that keyboard and mouse is struggling to meet this 50% threshold. While it's true that I am mourning my inability to use my favorite input method, you should take away from this video that both input methods need a serious rework. Thank you for watching. I greatly appreciate a like or a, or a subscription, and I look forward to what you have to say down in the comment section down below, though please keep it as kind and civil as you can. Thank you.